Um, now this starts to change in the mid 19th century. So um, we start breaking through the limits of local production in the early 19th century. Um, so what this means is it's not totally necessary that farmers produce everything for themselves. So farmers for years and years relied on themselves for most of their food, their family would work on the farm with them. And then, like I said, they could get other things that they, that, that might've come up other needs um, from the market if they needed to. Um, but for the most part, they had to sort of diversify their property. They had to make sure that they had wood for fuel. They had to make sure that they had animals for meat um, and manure, hay, sort of everything had to be going for them. Um, but with industrialization, what this means is people can start to specialize. So as we start to industrialize and um, as uh, transportation starts to improve, um, you know, with the, the railroads shortly after this, um, and also just with um, roads being built, there's a lot, it's a lot easier to transport things, which means it's not necessary for each farmer to do everything himself. He can start to specialize on one thing um, and then he can buy um, whatever else he needs using money he makes from selling his special his specialty. So what this leads to is forest cover declining sharply. And the reason for this is things like sheep. Um, so sheep, for example, um, they love to eat grass. We have sheep here at Gore Place. Um, they are ver uh, very, they're ravenous creatures um, and they need a lot of space for pasture. Um, and so the reason these became really popular in Vermont and um, around Massachusetts is that suddenly their wool was was really, really valuable in the early 19th century. There were a few different uh, kinds of sheep that were particularly valuable. Uh, Merino was, was uh, definitely the most popular. Um, and uh, basically farmers, no longer needing to uh, to produce everything themselves. They could specialize on, on really valuable products. And a lot of farmers chose to specialize in sheep. So they would, instead of growing a bunch of corn that, that you couldn't really sell, they said, you know what? I'm going to stop growing corn. I'm going to clear this whole, all this space. I'm going to have a pasture. I want to grow some hay and I want to keep some sheep. And then I'm going to sell the wool and I'll make a lot of money. And people did make a lot of money. And as you see here, so this is... Um, Moody Street, downtown Waltham, along the Charles River, you can see Prospect Hill in the background is starting to, you're starting to see it get cleared here. Um, so hills, for places that, that you would never expect um, to see farms nowadays were actually being farmed because suddenly you didn't, you didn't really need to have this really nice and easy, easily workable soil. You could just clear some upland pasture and and um, you know, let your sheep run wild, and uh, and that's what a lot of people did. Um, so let me. So um, sorry, I lost my notes. Um, all right. So the result of of specialization is forest cover starts to decline sharply. So farmers. Um, all around the state, but uh, especially in hilly areas um, farther west, so not not really along the coast, um, they start to capitalize on their space and they they clear it. So whether it's sheep or um, whether they're they're uh, doing cattle or dairy, they're specializing in valuable products and um, they're clearing their land to do that. So back then, you know. Hundreds, a uh, hundred years earlier, you had to keep some forest uh, for fuel, like I mentioned. But now, you know, you can you you can buy your fuel. Um, it's being brought down from from northern Maine. You don't have to to have everything you need on your property. You can just specialize, and the result is you start clearing everything. And so, by the mid nineteenth century, you can see just how much forest cover drops off. New England, um, the entire region goes down, although Maine and New Hampshire don't drop as dramatically, but Massachusetts and Connecticut, Southern New England drops a lot. So Massachusetts 
reaches about 30% forest cover, a little, a little less than 30% forest cover by the mid 19th century. And there are farms everywhere. Um, you know, nowadays when you walk through, and I'll talk about this later, um, you will walk through forests now and you'll see these old stone walls. That meant there was a farm there. Pretty much everywhere we walk, there used to be a farm. Uh, and most of it was cleared by the, the, by the mid 19th century. Um, so specialization. So like I said, they um, farmers like to specialize in more valuable products. Um, so it was really hard to compete in this new national market um, with the railroads, with improving transportation. Um, farmers need to specialize um, and to compete, uh, they start growing fruit, vegetables, dairy, and poultry. And um, these things, these are all things that farmers were, were doing already. Um, these aren't new products to them, um, but they are really valuable and they can be produced really efficiently on a small amount of space. Um, so after this, this huge purge of the trees, um, you know, specializing in, in sheep and, um, you know, all different things that they've required to have space. Um, now with, with transportation being much better, farmers suddenly, farmers in Massachusetts suddenly have to compete with farmers in the Midwest. And what that means is they don't need all the space anymore. So it's impossible to compete with Midwestern farmers. They have much, you know, this vast plains, just, um, perfectly flat. It's not as rocky. Um, and uh, when the railroads can carry most of your goods, um, it's it's really not it's not worth it anymore for these farmers to to keep growing certain things because someone in the Midwest can put it on a train and and get it there much cheaper. Um, so, but this doesn't mean agriculture was collapsing in Massachusetts. It means it was evolving. So we're specializing and we're using much less space which means that the forest is starting to grow back. You see these little white pines coming in. But meanwhile, there's still Boston. There are still cities and mill towns and factories, and there are huge markets. And farmers around Boston actually still thrived, even as much of the countryside started to look like this, they still thrived because there were these huge markets. So here's Waltham in 1910. You see the big the watch factory. Um, and then here is Quincy market in Boston. And you just see these are really big buildings, lots of people, these cities are growing quickly and they're not farming, which is really important. These people that are living in cities that are living, that are working in factories, they can't grow food for themselves. So the people who stay on the farm are able to make a lot of money because, you know, someone's got to grow the food and Midwestern farmers can't do everything. Um, you know, refrigeration is not, not what it is now. Uh, transportation is, is getting better, but it's, it's still not great. So things like fresh vegetables have to be grown locally. Uh, milk has to be uh, made locally. There are a whole bunch of things that local farmers could still thrive um, producing because they still had that advantage being so close to these big markets. And Middlesex County leads the way. So <clears throat> like I said, being close to the markets was everything. Um, Middlesex County being right around Boston uh, became a very agricultural county. Um, and by the turn of the century, it was 52% farmland. 52% uh, of it was improved and improved means it was being used. It was plowed. It wasn't just, you know, a farm that had been taken over by the forest, like, like back here. So this wouldn't be considered improved. If it had grown over and it wasn't being used, that's unimproved farmland. That's just farmland. Improved farmland is farmland that's actively being used and 52% of farmland um, which is higher than the state average and much higher than the national average was being improved and used in Middlesex County. Um, and in 1890 and uh, the next few decades, Middlesex County was leading the country in the value of market garden produce sold. 
Um, and market gardens, uh, if you're not familiar, are are gardens that um, sell through a storefront. Um, they also they're also are called truck gardens, um, and they're these you know they're small scale gardens. Uh, they're not huge farms. They they specialize in in fruit and vegetables, um, and they sell it either in Quincy Market like this, or they sell it at a storefront like this. Um, and Middlesex County has a lot, a lot of market gardens. And for this reason, they, uh, the average per acre valuable of vegetables in Massachusetts is higher than anywhere else in the country. And this is um, Middlesex County is, is sort of is pulling the weight here because all these little towns uh, just outside of Boston, um, even some cities like Waltham, um, you know, they're they're densely populated uh, compared to the rest of the country. But there's still there's plenty of space to grow food and um, there's plenty of people to buy this food. Um, so the business is, is doing really well in Middlesex County and uh, farmers are thriving. And so here are a few examples. So here's an old dairy farm um, in Brockton. Um, and then then a Shoba fruit belt, if anyone's familiar, there are still a lot of uh, orchards uh, that are still operating today. Um, and this, they started specializing in apples in the early 20th century. Um, and then poultry. So sadly, chickens, um, people decided that chickens did not need a lot of space. Um, and so they, they crammed them in into small coops. Um, this is just one example. But uh, basically, they would feed these these chickens a lot, um, which which would uh, help them lay more eggs, and um, they would confine them in uh, smaller spaces um, because, like like I'm saying, there's not a whole lot of space, um, and they're trying to extract as much value as much uh, profit out of out of their space as possible. And what this leads to is, you know, chickens being in confined spaces. Um, market gardens uh, growing as much as they possibly can on a small amount of space, um, and, um, and then of course the uh, the fruit fruit farmers they're they're growing um, apples orchards are very close together um, and they're starting to use um, different sprays pesticides sort of farming is becoming more of a business and the landscape is becoming um, it's starting to reflect that so it's becoming a little more fragmented. And so here's downtown Boston, Washington Street. And so like I mentioned earlier with the, the watch factory in Waltham, you see all these people walking around in the city. They're, you know, they're working at it's a department store like Jordan Marsh. They're shopping there. They're taking the trolley. These people aren't farming. And you might see this picture and think, you know, how how is agriculture still thriving um, only a couple miles away? And the answer is these people aren't farming. And Someone has to feed them, and the Midwest eventually is going to do that. Most most of our food now comes from um, all around the country, but back then you could still do really well um, as a farmer, um, providing food for the city. And so, even while uh, these farmers are doing really well just around the city, um, farther inland, white pines start to take over. So this is, um, uh, again, in the Harvard Forest Diorama. And this would be around the turn of the century. This is the, the early 20th century. Um, and these farms that are not specialized, that are not these, you know, uh, specialized in poultry or, or vegetables or fruit or dairy. Um, these are these, these old family farms that can't keep up anymore. They start to get taken over by white pines. And um, now this may seem sad at first, and it is because a lot of people were forced to move into cities and, and to give up farming. Um, but uh, if you stayed, these white pines, which were historically very pesky and really annoying because they grew really fast and they would, they would pop up on your pasture, um, they suddenly became really valuable because of these. 